coming up next on the Wet Fly Swing Podcast. The consistent fishing is our is our bass fishing, especially into the the early summer. So yeah, we do we do uh, a couple of different lakes where we do, we go chase spring you know spawning bass around, and that's kind of a saltwater experience in some cases. You know, you stand on the front of a boat and get to see the fish, make your shot, and um, and every once in a while you get to play with the tiger muskie too. Ed Anderson taking us deeper and deeper into the West. Bass, muskie, and the diversity of Idaho today on the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. Hey, how are you doing today? Thanks for stopping by the show. Ed gives us his favorite uh, top fly today and a little challenge later in the episode. If you want to check out how we're doing on the Top Fly Challenge, head over to wetflyswing.com slash topfly and you can enter your name and get a chance to win a fly box of flies. This episode is sponsored by Trestle, designing, engineering, and manufacturing industry-leading outdoor products in premium apparel. I've got my five weight right now in the CRC rod carrier and it's always rigged up and ready to go. Just got off a road trip and it was always handy to have it right, uh, easily accessible. Please head over to wetflyswing.com slash trestle that's T-R-X-S-T-L-E to support this podcast and a great company now. We're also brought to you by Rare Gear, making unique and innovative fishing gear to help you travel lighter, faster, and fish more often. Rare Gear uh, is innovating fly fishing gear, helping hikers, bikers, multi-sport enthusiasts cast their line and get out on that next adventure. You can head over to raregear.com right now to check out this unique product that's r-e-y-r gear.com and anderson takes us on his journey around the west and his focus on idaho today as we talk about uh, what he's got going and specifically as we touch on the mccall area we dig into the payette river the boise area and how he went uh, deep into kayaks for a while he has a bunch of experience in the kayak to end and uh, we also find out about the best species and times of year to hit idaho we kind of dig into a little bit of it all so if you are new to the area or uh, around that area this is going to be some good uh, bonus information today let's jump into it so without further ado here he is ed anderson from mccallangler.com how's it going ed What's up, Dave? How are you doing? Good. Thanks for taking a little time and putting this one together. We're going to dig into a little bit on uh, Idaho. Uh, you're out uh, in kind of the McCall area, and uh, we're going to dig into that today. A little bit on your artwork and kind of see where else it takes us today. So um, before we jump into a little on the fishing and uh, and all that, let's just bring us back to how you first got into fly fishing. Well, I first got into fly fishing. Uh, we had a lodge up in, in Donnelly, just south of McCall. Uh, it really serviced Tamarack Ski Resort. And... Uh, when the economy fell apart in 2008, 2009, we were looking for new revenue streams and had a good buddy who was kind of pseudo retired that I was fishing with a bunch. And we started fishing the streams and lakes around the lodge. And uh, at the same time, I was working for Jackson Kayak doing doing part of their fishing team stuff, going to trade shows and uh, all of a sudden found a market with the artwork and the fishing and the lodge and uh yeah kind of fell backwards into it started started fishing all over the country all over the world doing stuff with publications and and uh yeah it's turned into kind of a kind of a good business for us here in idaho and you're out in the uh for those that aren't familiar with idaho you're in kind of the the western part of idaho yeah i think fishing game classifies it as southwestern idaho so we're uh two hours north of boise uh right next to the frank church wilderness uh pinned between the frank church wilderness and hell's canyon Oh, wow. So, yeah. Wow. You're yeah. in the, you're in the, um, got two amazing areas, right? I think the Frank church, well, let's see what, I mean, that's a pretty huge area, right? You're like wilderness areas, right? That's kind of what you're in. Yeah. Yeah. The Frank church is the largest wilderness area in the lower 48 and, uh, hell's canyons, the deepest Canyon in America. So yeah, kind of a couple neat things there. There you go. There you go. So how do you spend your time? Do you spend more of your time, um, you know, in one of those areas or it sounds like you're kind of all over the place. We're all over the place. We do, we, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do some backcountry fly-in stuff into the Frank church. I don't spend too much time in Hell's Canyon. I've had a couple of, uh, debacle hunting trips that have gone in there, but, uh, 
Um, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. I, I do guide for McCall Angler. I head up there quite a bit and, and work with those guys and make sure that business is, is going well. But then I also travel around the country doing, doing a lot of saltwater fishing and, um, yeah. And then, and then travel in the state, going over the Henry's fork, uh, silver Creek, all the, all the good spots around us. Perfect. Well, I want to jump into maybe specifically into something that you, you know, kind of fish more than maybe the other areas in Idaho, but maybe we can just start off with a quick little primer. Again, uh, Idaho, you know, it's got this uh, weird shape. It's got the, you know, the panhandle and it's, uh, you, you got that whole no- Northern part up there, but, um, you know, you hear a lot more about the Henry's Fork and, you know, Hell's Canyon and, and Boise and, and kind of that stuff, but give us a little uh, primer on just Idaho really quick. What's it look like? So from McCall, you know, do you just drive across a few hours across the state and now you're over on the other side and you're fishing the Henry's Fork? No, 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 no. You got to be pretty deliberate to get to McCall. McCall is, I mean, like, like I said, it's, it's pinned up uh, against a, a bunch of geography. So you got to be in Boise pretty much driving two hours north. So uh, yeah, McCall is not passed through country, uh, which is, which is good and bad. Unfortunately, and fortunately during the pandemic, uh, we saw, you know, the people from the West coast found it and they are oh. coming in, coming in droves. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah. And then, and then once you get to Boise, uh, the interstate kind of follows along the snake river. So if you think, of, if you think of the snake river is just kind of traveling through the desert, uh, East to West across, across the state. So, um, the Henry's fork of the snake is kind of the, the north south running uh arm of the snake river over on the east side of the state which is about five hours from us uh and then in the middle is kind of silver creek in the south fork of the boise american falls um so we i mean we pretty much concentrate on southern idaho that those mm. northern people i don't know what they're doing up there most of the gotcha. time so it's just that's a different country i think yeah that's right okay so this is more <laughs> yeah more southern that's awesome and yeah well take, take us to this so the mccall angle you're doing some guiding up there where are you you know focusing your time when you're where you're heading up there uh, primarily the permits for McCall Angler are, uh, the Payette river, uh, coming out of McCall, uh, and then out of Cascade. Um, the Valley is called long Valley. It's the, it's the largest County. I, I might be wrong on that, but I think Valley County is the largest County, uh, in Idaho, uh, and the, and long Valley is the primary Valley. So that river comes down, uh, starts heading South towards Boise out of McCall. Um, we guide all of that. We guide most of the the mountain lakes up above McCall and then a bunch of the mountain reservoirs up there doing, doing a bunch of, and it's a diverse fishing experience that changes week to week. So we'll do drift boat fishing one week on the, on the river, and then we'll hike into a mountain lake, lake the next, then the next week we'll go chase tiger muskie in a drift boat. So all kinds of different things we're doing up there. Yeah, that's pretty cool because you're you've got the uh, yeah you've got the mountain lakes and you've got the rivers, the Paya, and you've got the that, and then you've also got yeah Hell's Canyon, I and mean, you've got this Snake River, which is uh, you know flowing eventually into the Columbia, and you got all that. Uh, you don't really have well, you, and you do have kind of salmon steelhead too out there, right? Is that something you focused on in the past? Yeah, we actually work with a bunch of uh, salmon and steelhead guides up in the Riggins area, Riggins, and uh, you know up to uh, Kami. Uh, so yeah, you got the you got the clear water, the Columbia, uh, uh, the snake, yeah. the, the little salmon, the, the big salmon coming out of the wilderness area. So that, yeah. Um, you know, when steelhead fishing is good, it's, it's good. And, and we have a great time with it, but, uh, yeah. So we work with some guides up there and send them some business as well. Right on. And what are the species? If you think of trout, um, up on the pad is, is that uh, cutthroat? Uh, red band rainbows. Oh, it is. Uh, you, yeah, you got you got to move over into the wilderness to get to get cutthroat. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yep. That's right. Because I was thinking I've been I spent a while, but the Middle Fork of the Salmon we floated that a while back, and I remember that was a, a West Slope Cuddy, right? That was or uh, yeah, yep. West Slope Cuddies, right? Yep. 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 That's it. Nice. And what is your if you consider kind of your home water in Idaho? Do you have something you kind of consider that home water? I go between McCall and Boise quite a bit. I've, I've taken to a lot of warm water fishing down in Boise, uh, and, and my, I have young twin daughters. So I spend, I spend a lot of time around Boise and and on the snake river. Um, but then, yeah, if I have my druthers, I'm up in the mountains in McCall and, you know, just trying to figure out what's fishing up there. Okay. And what is fishing? So McCall, when you go up there, if you're just going up with by yourself to go fishing, um, where are you heading in that out of McCall for a trout? Uh, I mean, you're you're going to fish the Payette River, depending on flows, uh, or you're going to head up to the mountain lakes. Honestly, the most consistent is the mountain lakes up there. Go go backpack in with a flow tube or just or fish from shore. 
Um, but yeah, there's lots of, there's lots of unique options. Uh, Ron Howell used to own fly fish McCall up there and he said, McCall's a place of windows and you got to be there to know when the windows open. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So you got to know it. You can't just, uh, like right now, if we were thinking like, okay, this fall, I want to plan a trip. It's kind of hard to say, I'm going to go here and have great fishing in say September. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really tough. It's, it's all dependent on, on what's, what's open, what the irrigation is doing, what the recreation is doing. The Payette Lake and Cascade Reservoir up there are gigantic recreation reservoirs and they manage the water for that recreation. So these people, these people need to have the right level for their wakeboarding boat to be in. So we might <laughs> not go. get water sometimes, you know? Oh, right, right, right. So that's it. So the, does the wakeboarding come before the fly fishing uh, as a priority up there? Uh, certainly, certainly. I mean, it's, that's, uh, the, the real estate revenue and the sales revenue, everything, you know, that's, that's primarily what people are doing up there. It's, uh, uh, well, I've been, I've been up there, uh, 20 years. It's changed quite a bit from kind of a sleepy, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of old Boise families had homes up there that, that they'd go up and a lot of hunting, a lot of camping, canoeing, uh, fishing. Those were, those were kind of the focuses. And now it is a, uh, yeah, it's kind of a wakeboarding town and golfing is the it is. is where is where it's it seems to have moved to. Fortunately, we're opening a store this year, so uh, hopefully educate some of these people about uh, the great resources they have around them and the, the access to the backcountry. Right there, you go. And and then if you take it, you mentioned Boise. So if you're down in Boise, what what is the you know you've got the warm water stuff, but if you're thinking trout, what would you be hitting out of Boise? Oh, I, I would probably be remiss if I mentioned that oh, on yeah. podcast today because, uh, no, I mean, I, I would say, but I would get a bunch of flack from a lot of my friends here. <laughs> well, just tell me this. Is it in Oregon? Uh, there's some things in Oregon. Yes, yeah. certainly. Uh, there's some things close to town, but I mean, you know, Boise is the fastest growing place in America right now. And, yeah. uh, the, uh, the streams are feeling it. Let's say that. Right. Why, why is that? <laughs> why is Boise the fastest growing place? Is that actually true? You know, Dave, I got out here uh, 20 years ago with the Air Force, 22 years ago. Wow, getting getting there, I guess. Um, but I uh, grew up in Minneapolis, got out west and came to Boise uh, and fell in love. It's a, it's a tremendous climate, access to everything you want to do. I mean, where I live, uh, 10 minutes east of town, uh, there's mountain biking. The river's right here. I can get up, up to Idaho city. I can go to McCall. I mean, it's, and, and the, the weather's just great. So, yeah. uh, it doesn't really rain there, right? You, you, you almost don't get any rain. Yeah. We get 300 days of sunshine a year or something like that. That's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. So you got the weather, you're in the desert and then, and then how about the, I'm curious because this has been coming up a number of years. It seems like almost, I remember when we came over from Wyoming back, the fires were, were raging and there was smoke everywhere, but it seemed like we just kind of cut our way through down through that area and we missed some of the smoke. Do you guys still get a little bit of that smoke down there? Uh, yeah, we, we do. It's, uh, it just depends on where the fires are and, and how the, you know, where the winds are coming from, uh, you know, these La, La Nina years, the, the wind comes from the South quite a bit. So if California is burning, we get a bunch oh, of that smoke. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, it really depends on what the jet stream's doing and where the flow's coming from. Gotcha. Yeah. Sweet. Well, the payette was one that I had on my, uh, on my radar and I've actually been, I think, you know, I fished a little bit, but not really enough to really know much of anything. And it's, it's kind of one of those rivers that's just out there. You don't hear as much about it, right? You know, you hear about these other ones, but take us yep. to the payette a little bit. If somebody's thinking about heading up there to, uh, you know, go fishing, let's just start with a, you know, quick time of the year. Is that something where you can kind of fish it year round or how does that look? No, I mean, the middle of the summer, it's going to be tough. It's not, uh, like I said, it's not managed for fishing. So, and it's not a tailwater, neither of the dams coming oh, right. out of the payette or cascade or tailwaters. So they're all that water's coming over the top and, uh, with, with the management for recreation and irrigation, the water flows might be really bad right now. We're waiting for the dam to open so we can get our drift boats on and fish for a month before it really starts to shut off because once July hits, it's, it's bad. Right now is a great time of year to walk and wade some spots of it. Uh, the water's cool enough. The fish are coming, you know, they finished their spawn and they're hanging out, uh, you know, still hanging out in the rivers. The, the bug life is tremendous. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it depends on, on flows and, and what the temperature of the water is. So, you yeah. know, as fly fishermen, we know that, that uh, you know, the trout like cool water. And, and if we're practicing catch and release fishing, 
you know, being in there in July when the water's 75 degrees. Yeah. We just don't do it. <laughs> That's not good. So, so the summer's out. So when does it start after the summer? When could you start thinking in the fall, getting out there to fish it that would be decent? My favorite time to fish it is when, when there's still snow on the ground, getting in there early, uh, you know, the fish are, are just starting their pre-spawn runs. And, and I mean, we do some of my favorite trips, we pull a canoe over the snow and, and figure out how to slide down the river and fish big streamers to big fish. Oh, really? So this would be like in what, in like uh, February? No, no, no. Probably like the end of March, April. End of March, April. Yeah. Valley, Valley County gets, you know, 200 to 300 inches of snow a year. Oh, right, so it's right, a, right. it's a, it's a real winter. Um, yeah. And yeah. So, so when the, when the ice breaks on the river, uh, the fish start, you know, start frolicking up the streams and they're, they're hanging out in there. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So this is a small little window here. You got like, uh, a, a little early spring window Well, spring. And then is there a window in the, uh, in the fall before it gets uh, snowy again? Um, a little bit, a little bit, again, depending on flows, it's really tough. It's really, really tough in the fall. We've had, obviously last year was, was very awful. Um, fishing just wasn't very good at all, but, uh, it, it can be, it can be really good in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So basically it's a short little window there. Yep. And then, uh, and then take us, let's go back to that, that Boise uh, for a second. Um, so yep. what's that look like? So you're in Boise, you're talking about warm water and things like that. What, where are you, you can't name anything, but, but is there, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, what, what would you say? Well, let's just say, you know, you got, obviously there's a fly shop there. If I go into a fly shop in Boise and I say, Hey, I want to go fishing. Where, where are they pointing me to? Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're booking a certain river in, in uh, Oregon for sure. Uh, the, the, the Boise river, the Boise river runs right through town, uh, and is great fishing. I mean, it's a, it's a tailwater coming out of lucky peak reservoir. Uh, it, it can be, I've had my, my best fishing days have all been on the Boise river and then I'll go back the next day and have my worst fishing day. Oh, so really? it is a, it's a, it's a very tricky stream. It's not for the faint of heart for sure, but, uh, yeah. So those are the, those are kind of the two primary ones. Um, and then the going down to the snake river, uh, bass and carp, uh, you know, sturgeon fishing is a thing for yeah. people who like to sturgeon fish, obviously not on the fly, but, uh, That's yeah, right. no, there's a, there's a, there's kind of a diverse experience of, of what you can do here. That's right. Yeah. I think, and I'm not even sure if this is true. I've always had this stat that the world record sturgeon, like 1250 pounds was caught in, in that uh, in one of those reservoirs in there is that yeah it's i i it's below one of these dams on the snake river yeah. i don't know which one but yeah certainly and catfish right and like 850 pound catfish or something like that i yeah i don't know i've i've, I've never done to, i've never talked to anybody about catfishing around here but i'm sure it's a yeah yeah <laughs> yeah they're definitely out there I, I had this uh crazy friend back in high school we used to go down there and he uh i think it was somewhere around hell's Canyon. he would break out the bow and arrow and shoot catfish yeah yeah out off the bank in, kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where that, that guy is, but, uh, so no, this is good. So I, I, I think I'm trying to dig in, you know, I mean, the Boise, I think would be interesting to talk a little more about that too, just because it's right there, probably a good resource for people. Uh, the, um, you know, the payette would be good. It's, it's got a little window. Wh which one, if I had to say, would you, you know, rather dig into the Boise or the payette, which one would it be? I would say the Boise. It's a it's a, it's a more consistent cool water fishery. I I I love the Payette, but honestly, if if you're not with us, it's very it's very very hard to figure out. I know yeah. a lot of people who have told me the Payette's sterile. There's no fish in there. Yeah, and uh, like. But well, one, it's, there's a lot of it that's private. So getting access is very, very difficult. And two, the, it is, it's, it's contingent on flows, weather. I mean, all the, all the things. So, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that about the pay when we came there, it just seemed like, it was like, wow, this is an amazing place. We were camping at one of the spots there. And, but I remember just being like, damn, I'm not finding any fish. It kind of, I can't remember what time of year it was, but it was probably summer. It must have yeah. been summer. Yeah. So, yeah. So good. Well, let's do that. Let's dig into a little on Boise because that's an easy one that people could sure. swing by. And, and the other unnamed ones, you know, the people that are listening, some people we've touched on that. I know at least one guest touched on that um, in the past. So, yeah, I'm sure you've you've talked over the years with somebody who's told all these spots before. I'm just not going to be. the guy. No, no, I, <laughs> no, that's great. Exactly. No, that's good. But the yeah. Boise is easy. The Boise is right there. So and it's a tailwater. So let, yep. let's start. Let's start there in the Boise. So, again, we're, we're coming in yep. there. Somebody's going to swing by and fish the Boise. What, what's the first thing we need to know? Is it um, same thing summertime? I mean, is it year round now? We're we talking here. 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a year round fishery, uh, can be done. Uh, you know, we're, we're victim to spring runoffs and, and irrigation here too, but, uh, like right now the river's flowing great. It's, and, and we've got a lot of snow, so they're still holding water back and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's fishing, it's fishing. Okay. Right now. I, I mean, the first recommendation is you got to stop and see some experts. So, you know, Idaho anglers up there on Vista, go talk to those clowns. Yeah. Idaho anglers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Perfect. Yep. All right, Idaho anglers start there. So we'll start at the shop and then, and then, and then if somebody didn't have a chance to swing by, they're just going for it. If they, you know, let, let's just think time of year. So if you had to pick the one, you know, money time to go hit, you know, the Boise, when, when would that be? I'm going to, I'm going to fish it, uh, August, September, you know, that, that when the, when the water, you know, they've, they figured out all the irrigation consistencies, the water is going to stay the same level for a number of, a number of days. Like that, that's when I'm going to fish it. Yeah. August, September. And the weather is amazing. It's uh, 90 degrees. You're in shorts. It, it might be the best place in the world yeah. in August, September. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're taking, they're taking a dip in the water. Yeah. You got it all. Yeah, I got some Boise State football going. You know, the 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 city's oh, kind of right. lighting up with cities. Cities lighting up with schools. So you know, kind of the the downtown's fun. And oh, yeah, right, it's a right. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's the Boise? The Boise State? What the Broncos? Yeah, they're the Broncos. They're the weirdos that play on the uh, blue turf. Yeah, the blue turf, and they're the orange. And they've been like this crazy dominant team, right? For are they still like a dominant in their in their? Uh... Yeah, they did. They still, you know, they're they're the preeminent team in the Mountain West Conference, yeah. which is you know, hey, I guess they're it's like a real the conference football. But right, um, it used to be when I moved here, it used to be great. They used to be like a real college. They'd have tailgates in the afternoon, and and so you could go fish. This this the the river runs right next to the stadium, so you could go fish in the morning walk out in your waders and uh yeah and, and be at the tailgate you know having oh, a beer in nice. a plastic cup perfect um now they now they play all their games at like nine o'clock at night so they can get their espn time oh, uh so right. so you're uh yeah you're not standing in the river for two hours of dark but it's still it's still a pretty fun time yeah yeah, yeah that's right yeah. so you got the boise yeah, okay and uh good well maybe if we have time we'll, we'll uh, swing back to that at the end that's i always yep. love to dig into a little sports that's a, f- a fun thing so uh um, <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah so on the boise so we're talking maybe august september things are great there what what's that look like for fishing i mean hatches and things like that what, what would you be what would you be bringing there for your box uh i mean maybe you're going to get a little bit of a caddis hatch uh primarily though you're you're nymph and uh nymph nymph and streamer and uh in the fall uh, I'm moving a little bit low, lower down the river and, and probably streamer fishing for hopefully the Browns are coming out of the snake river. The big Browns are getting ready to spawn. And, um, that's, that's kind of what you're hunting. You're hunting. Stream. Okay. So, so streamers for Browns. And then, and what does that look like when you're, when you're going for a stream? I mean, what's your, take us to that. You're set up there. So you got these Browns coming up. That sounds pretty crazy. How yeah. are you finding them? How does that look? If you got, you got all these uh, rainbows around as well, right? Yeah. I mean, there's rainbows around, uh, I mean, you know, just, just looking for the aggressive fish, deep holes. It's, you know, like, like any, like, you know, bottom of riffles going into deep holes, just swinging streamers through. Yeah. And that's yep. it. You're just, so you're just swinging, I mean, essentially down and across getting deep using like what, like sinking lines or how are you doing that? Or just weighted flies? Yeah. Yeah. Using a, using an intermediate sink and, and getting down, getting down and dirty. Yeah. And just, uh, yeah. Swinging through holes. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, yeah. and is this something where you're going to be walking and waiting or are you doing this out of a boat? Uh, great question. We used to, we used to do a lot of, before the, the town started growing, we used to do a lot of, uh, uh, cast and blast in the fall. We used to go down and, and when the, when the duck season would open a little bit later, we'd go, we'd float it a lot more. Now there's just so many people on the river. It's a little tough to do that. Oh, um, really? but, but yeah, no, I mean, it, you can, you can walk it a lot, but again, a lot more of this is taken up by private property and people buying nice, nice pieces of property on the river. And so they are a little bit more wary about walking, waiting. So you just got to be conscious of, oh. of, you know, conscious of your neighbors and what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. So there's, uh, so you can't walk necessarily. Uh, yeah. You've got, if there's private it depends property, on where, yeah. it depends on where you are on the river. Honestly, the, the green belt, uh, the, the, the city of Boise has runs right. You know, there's, a, there's two paths on each side of the river where you can go from, uh, I, I don't know, it's probably about 10 miles of river that you can walk, you know, walk or ride a bike to each fishing hole and, and mm. go, go right. do the thing. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then August, September, and then are you, and you said, so you could continue fishing, throughout the uh, end of the winter and and that's like the, all good since it's a tailwater 
Yep. Yep. Yeah. Winter, winter can be really good here. We don't, uh, Boise doesn't get hardly, you know, we'll get snow for a couple of weeks and it's cold, but yeah, if you're, uh, if you're willing to brave 30 degrees, uh, yeah, go fishing. And then, and then, uh, fishing game does, does plant steelhead in the river from time to time. You got to look at that schedule and figure out when it is, but that turns into a, you know, you get a little taste of combat fishing for a few oh, days really? for sure. Yeah. No kidding. So, right. So people are just shoulder to shoulder out there in, in the runs. Yeah, pretty much right where they wherever they dump them in there. Oh, you know, really? They, they post it, and yeah, it's a it's kind of a comical like I I don't know if you've ever been up to the Kenai or even on yeah, the Salmon yeah. River here. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that right that kind of, of feel. It's kind of funny. So yeah, yeah, it is right. Yeah, yeah just like fishing the salmon fishing right in uh, Anchorage, right where they got just people downtown shoulder to shoulder. Yep, exactly, exactly. This episode is sponsored by Bear Vault. Assuring your next backcountry trip stays memorable, epic, and safe. Bear Vault builds a rugged polycarbonate locking canister that keeps bears and other wild animals out of your stuff. This definitely uh, keeps you safe and keeps the bears safe while out in the woods. We've heard all those bear stories over the years about them ripping into your uh, your gear, your cooler, your boats, you know, whatever. Um, there's all sorts of ways to do it wrong, but Bear Vault will make sure you don't have to worry about that on your next trip here. Believe it or not, food storage is a key consideration when in the backcountry. Uh, the Bear Vault has a couple of great bonus features, including uh, it acts as a, a stool. That's always handy. It's got a large, wide opening mouth, so you can grab all your gear, and it's easily uh, accessible. You can see everything through the clear canister. Be the guy who has the epic trip, not the guy who has to hike out early because of improper food storage. Bear Vault will keep you rolling. Check them out right now. That's wetflyswing.com slash bear vault. That's B-E-A-R-V-A-U-L-T to check them out right now. Okay, back to the show. So the Boise is a good one. That's one we can hit. And if we want to get more information, like you said, the fly shop, uh, you got the McCall you mentioned up north. You're hitting the Payette. Uh, is it the Payette or Payette? Payette. Pay it. Yeah, pay it. You it's probably. Pay it. I I would actually guess that the that the uh, native in the native language, it's probably more like pay it or pay it. To, you know, pay but it. I right, right, right. But yeah, I mean the the Anglo sizing of it, it's it's pay it. Yeah, yeah. pay it. Okay, <laughs> and then take it, and then just and you might not know, you know, further north, but you kind of go up north and you go up into the like the eventually the Coeur d'Alene, right, which is the cro- you know the highway crossing through there. What is that? I mean, you don't hear as much about that area up there. Is that just a wilderness area? A lot of that forest and yeah, I'm not. I'm definitely not your guy uh, up there. There's uh there's a few great fly shops up in in uh, Coeur d'Alene, but yeah, the the Coeur d'Alene, the Kootenai, uh, the St. Joe's up there. Oh yeah, St. Joe's. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and then yeah, I mean, I've I've done a little bit of fishing on the lake, you know, on the on the the headwaters of the lakes. So you know, there's there's some there's some really neat stuff up there. There is, yeah, that's right, Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. So you got so you got some fly shops up there, and then as you if you come down and you're on the east side of Idaho and, and heading down, then you eventually get into well, what's the next big fishing kind of area? Is that eventually down towards the Henry's Fork, or is there anything in between there? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, you, you know, you're right there at the Madison and the Henry's fork and the Yellowstone, uh, right. I mean, you're, you're basically at Yellowstone park right there in the, in the corner. And then you come out, uh, if you come out of West Yellowstone, you go to, yeah, you drop into last chance and the Henry's fork and the, the railroad ranch all the way down into Ashton where the, you know, all the, the drift boat fishing takes place there. Uh, and then back into the main snake river at, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure which town they join in, but yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, gotcha. And then what's on the southern? So you said you're southern. What, what's south of you? What's like down to the Idaho border? What's what's all that down there look like? That's the Oahe, the, the Oahe mountain range in the desert. So it's uh, there's not much water coming out of there. There's a few kind of rafting streams, the Brunos down there. Um, there's some there's some little lakes, the Bruno Dunes, uh, just south of the Snake River. Um, but not much. I mean, it's mostly just the Snake River, and then it's it gets desert. Uh, you know, Nevada's yeah. right below us. Nevada so it and gets, Salt it, Lake, yeah, yeah, it gets to real desert real quick. So, I don't know. Most of most of my friends who are fishing south of us are going to Pyramid. <laughs> Pyramid, that's right. Yeah, you yeah. heard about Pyramid with the la- with the ladders out there. So it's, it's good. I mean, yeah. I know I know when you look at geo- geographically, it's pretty cool because it's just surrounded. You know, it's surrounded by, like you said, Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Montana. Oregon and Washington. I mean, it's like this one little state 
well, it's not a little state, but it's a state yeah. right in the middle <laughs> of all these things. And it's it's the pass through, right? Because yep. if people are in one place, they're going through Idaho, they got to go through Idaho to get across. And yep. so, you, so you got all these people crossing. Like you said, you had these people in COVID come up to McCall. And what do you mean by that? It just got a little bit too busy up there. Is that you just just too many people? It just got, it got busy, and you know, as somebody who's been there, you know, I'm a, I'm a I'm a transplant as well. So far be it for me to to criticize anyone for coming to a beautiful place and loving it. But you know, a lot of that a lot of that money from COVID was coming coming straight into town, cash offers on giant houses and priced oh, out yeah. a lot. Like I said, it's a, a traditionally kind of an oh, old, right. you know, like a yeah. like a generational family town for Boise people, people who've grown up here. And uh, yeah, a lot of people got priced out. My biggest concern for our outfitting business and lodge is how do I find housing for guides and, and my staff just to to take care of them? Because that's almost impossible right now. You know, having fights with the city to put trailers on temporarily so people have a place to live is a it's a real problem. The, oh, wow. the, pe- the people who are the, the traditional stewards of that community are having a tough time figuring out how to live like any, yeah. any big vacation town in America, you know, right. it, it's been a, it's been a holdover for a long time, but uh, yeah, they finally found it. <laughs> oh, no, okay. So that's it. So that's the challenge yeah. is you've got the local community and then you've got, and you see this in a lot of these vacation places <clears throat> where the, you know, some people come in with a lot of money and they start buying up and then everything gets so expensive that the, and you could even see it in cities, right? Like, uh, sure. You know, right. And it happens anywhere. Yeah, it's happening in Boise right now too. It's same same deal, you know. You yeah. you can't find you can't find enough staff to work in in some of the restaurants or you know theaters or whatever that makes the city cool. You know, these people are having a really really hard time finding a place to live because it's so oh god, so, that's crazy. Yeah, so that's a yeah. That's a definite struggle. Well, this is, um, I want to touch on a couple of things here. You mentioned one at the start, um, you know, I love talking boats. So you, you mentioned uh-huh. Jackson kayak. Uh, we're going to circle back around to some fishing, but uh, talk about that. That's All cool. Right. So you, so if I was going to get a, a kayak and we actually had an episode, I'll put a link in the show notes with, um, on Jackson kayak. So we, we did a little, oh, really? okay. yeah, we did a little kayak one oh one, but, yeah. um, but it's been a little while. So what is the, the if you want to grab that boat, and I know they have a diverse selection, what, what would be your lake boat if you're going to grab something to fish lakes? Uh, I mean, they have they have a lot of different options for flat water boats. Um, for me, when I was fishing out of them all the time, they had a boat called a Kusa. Oh, yeah. That, I remember that. That uh, had kind of a snub nose. And so uh, there was a lot of water. There's, there's a lot of water around here that's like a class two, class three uh, rapid. And so I wanted that snub nose. Yeah to take down waves. And, and I mean, I, you know, I've got so many people, I mean, in, in you, but probably better than anyone know the fly fishing community and how they, uh, you know, kind of fight with, uh, traditions. Mm, so talking, yeah. talking to somebody about, uh, fly fishing out of a kayak is always a kind of a hard challenge. Yeah. I love that though. That that's what I love. I think that's what I'm finding our sweet spot is, is, is the, yeah. like we are the, I think I love doing those episodes with the random stuff because it just, right, right, right. right. It throws in diversity. It's just like diversity of people out there, right? The, the 50, 50 movement or whatever. Um, yeah. you know what I mean? The more diverse that is probably the better it's going to be for all of us. I mean, but same thing with boats, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that's, and that's, that's why I started using the kayaks is because it gave me a, you know, it gave me a real range of experience that I could go access water that nobody else could. I didn't oh, need right. a trailer. I didn't need a boat ramp. I could, you know, it weighed, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big guy, but it still weighed, you know, it weighed 70 pounds. So I could get it on and off my truck, chuck it into anything. It's basically Tupperware. So I couldn't break it. Yeah. And the way they had those boats set up, you know, it had a lawn chair on it that you could stand, then you could stand up on the boat, Amazing. anchor it in anything. Um, and so I just, I got to fish so much different water around Idaho that really Idaho and everywhere really that nobody else had fished. Nobody else had thought of. I mean, I've been on little creeks and streams catching giant fish in this state that, I mean, some of my best people that, that are the fishiest dudes or, or females I know have never even thought about fishing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it was really, really enjoyable, but, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, unfortunately you kind of, you get into the industry, you start working in the industry, you start guiding in the industry, I can't put a client in a kayak next no. to me and figure out how to control their experience because it is a cluster. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tight. It's more of an individual. Yeah. More of a, a kayak. you need a, yeah. If you're guiding, yeah, you got to have a raft or a boat or something where you can have room. 
Yep. Yep. So yeah. So I went, I went from a kayak to a little, little raft, a little two man raft where I could kind of get into some of those experiences and then just found that, you know, in order to, in order to make the experience great. Yeah. You're into a drift boat eventually yeah. and, and into a, a really nice comfy raft. So yeah. What's your, uh, what do you go with, with your drift bar? Do you, I'm not sure if you have a drift boat now, but uh, I just, I just got the, the guys at Adipose were, uh, oh, yeah. were nice enough to, to get me a great new skiff last year. Uh, I've got a flat deck on the front so I can, you know, we spend a lot of time carp fishing. So taking people carp fishing, uh, and then, and then my guy Link Jackson here in Boise is making the stream tech boats. So oh, if right. I get, if I get my hands on a stream tech, yeah, we'll go, we'll go rock that around. That's right. Yeah. The stream tech, I've definitely heard, heard of them. So, so cool. So you got a couple of boats there and then what's your raft? What are you rolling with that? Well, I'll usually, I mean, I, uh, we're working with NRS, another Idaho company out of Moscow. Yep. Um, they're, so they're coming out with a whole new line of rafts this year. Uh, really excited to get my hands on, on one of their boats. Uh, but then, yeah, I, I'll use one of Link stream techs. If, if, if he's got them laying around, that's, that's always the tricky part with him though. There's, there's too many people who want those boats. So I can't ever find one anymore. <laughs> and these are the stream. Is this, a, is this a raft or a drift boat? The stream techs are, are a raft. So, oh, yeah, it's a raft. Uh, yeah, he, build, he builds them out of Moravia rafts, uh, you know, builds the whole frame, the setup, the kits. He works with uh, Sawyer Oars. Oh, it's a Moravia? It's a Moravia boat? Yeah, it's a Moravia boat, and then oh, the, wow. the stream tech brand is kind of his his custom package that he puts on it, all the boxes. So it's one of those bomber, like the, the Moravias are known for like super stiff, right? Super rigid? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just just really great. I mean, really, really great boats that, you know, I think I, I believe, and you'd have to talk to Link about it, but Link comes from a from a whitewater rafting background and has known boats in that boat community his whole life. So he went out and, and grabbed all the components and, and has been doing really well with it. I need to get a link on too. We we did a little series on like a drift boat season. We called it, but it was a little mix. We had a, we did one with NRS and then we, uh, but he would be cool to hear that. That sounds like a pretty awesome story. Yeah. He's a, he's an interesting character. He's, he, uh, he, I know he found his way through uh, corporate America back in the day and he was like, I just don't want to have a real job anymore and accidentally started building boats and now he's got a real job again. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Cool. Well, well, dude, I want to touch on just the uh, lakes. We're kind of all over the place and this is what's great with the Idaho. Because yeah. I, I want to just touch on a little bit of everything. Um, so you mentioned the lakes and we've got uh, most of these lakes, obviously you've got big reservoirs too, but if you're talking yep. the lakes where you're, where you're swinging, dumping in your kayak, is this a, a, like a high mountain lake? And talk about that a little bit. Like if somebody's wanting to do that, I mean, in terms of a kayak, I'm, I'm really not doing kayaks anymore, but I mean, it's, it works for everything. Um, yeah. The, I mean, the high mountain lakes, it's a, you know, the, the, the experience of getting out into the mountains of Idaho, you know, you're, you're in this beautiful place, being able to hike into some of these, some of these spots. In a lot of cases, you can drive into these spots um, and, and get small boats in. So like at our shop, we rent, uh, we rent float tubes to people, tell them, you know, tell them where to go get up there and, and kick around, uh, you know, we get some unbelievable ant hatches up in the mountain lakes. So, uh, and, and, and really nice fish for, for high mountain. A lot of them are stocked fish, uh, yeah. but, uh, they, they are generally unmolested. So they're, they're hungry. They're fun to play with and, and do really well. So, and then, and then we, we really pride ourselves on an educational aspect of fishing. So we've got access to some mountain reservoirs where we can drop drift boats in, which is just a great, it's a great platform to teach young people. Um, you know, you get them in the front of the boat. You don't have to worry about them snagging on anything. I mean, have to worry about them hooking your eye once in a while. So keep your sunglasses on, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great platform to teach young kids go out in some of these lakes and, and have them catch a, a number of fish while they're learning how to cast, learning some of the knots, learning, you know, learning all the things that you need to learn to be a beginner fly fisherman. What's your, a couple of the quick thing on the, on the tips and tricks there. We, and we've done a few episodes on still water as well, but what, what do you, if somebody's going up there and they're going to, you know, maybe be in a float tube, is it just kind of get an intermediate line or what, what, what would your, be your recommendation for having the gear for that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, and we're setting them up with, yeah, intermediate line, um, you know, a real simple, a real simple fly box, something that they don't have to think about, uh, you know, so, uh, some tippet that's, that's large enough that they can tie and feel comfortable with, you know, four X, uh, but yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing earth shattering. I mean, all the stuff that, that was easy back when fly fishing was easy and you weren't thinking about it too much. Yeah. So this is it. Yeah. These fish aren't really necessarily super educated. Like you have no, to be. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no. And ants on the surface is pretty fun too. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you get a little hatch right at, you know, right at that magic hour, it's, you know, the, the water's boiling around you and you're, and they don't care. So yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. So we touched on that and and now you mentioned carp. Let, let's take it to the species way. I mean, cause there's probably a, a bunch of species, but see if you can describe like, what, what are you fishing for there? So other than that's carp. A, that's a great transition, Dave. You go from like dumb mountain lake stockfish to the hardest thing on the planet. Exactly. Well, well, not just carp. And I don't want to stop at carp. I want to go into everything. I want to talk about like what else, you know, is carp because carp are they? Yeah. They're challenging, right? Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's like anything when it's on, it's on. I've had, I've had great days, but yeah, it's, I mean, carp are really, really tough to fool. Uh, and sometimes they don't want to fight. Sometimes they do. You just never have the same consistent pattern. I don't, I don't think from it, from day to day, but it is, it is really fun. Yeah. So you got carp. So we're going to make a little list here. We're going to have a, we're going to have oh carp on that list and we're going to have uh, and we don't have to go and get scientific about it, but I'm just kind of thinking, you know, rainbows. What what else are you fishing other than those species? Anything else? Or is that kind of, do you have a small few species that you fish for in Idaho? I mean, in Idaho, that's, uh, you know, we'll do, I'll, I'll chase smallies around uh, oh, yeah. primarily in the spring um, uh, and just, just streamer fish for them. Uh-huh. Nothing silly, but we've got some really good smallie fishing, uh, large mouth in the, in the river too. So there's large mouth around. Um, and I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good list. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go in the shop, if you're going up to McCall, well, especially McCall, they're going to, it's trout for the most part. And then, and then if you're in Boise, there's a little bit more warm water species, but it's still pretty much focused. It's a trout. Actually our consistent fisheries. I mean, you're asking about like what to come up to McCall yeah. for the consistent fishing is our, is our bass fishing, especially into oh, the, is. the early summer. So yeah, we do, we do, uh, uh, a couple of different lakes where we do, we go chase spring, you know, spawning bass around. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's kind of a saltwater experience in some cases, you know, you stand on the front of a boat and get to see the fish, make your shot. And, um, and every once in a while you get to play with the tiger muskie too. Right. So there you go. So we do have some more species. We got tiger yeah, muskie and, yeah. and, and then, uh, yeah, so there's a, definitely a little bit of diversity there. It seems like, um, you know, going up there, obviously a lot of people are thinking trout, but um, yeah, smallmouth. I mean, that's something that's getting more popular around the country. Have you seen that in the last 20 years, you know, the, the smallmouth fishing or just bass in general is kind of gaining yeah, I think it's I think it's a it's kind of a function of population and and uh, growth of the industry and the sport and and just people you know I personally if I want to go fishing I don't want to stand I don't want to I don't want to float the same river that a hundred other boats are, are are floating I want to go do something and and get away from the crowds um, and yeah as the as the industry sees people like me moving away from the crowds, trying to fish warm water stuff, then the industry is adapted. And I mean, there's, there's unbelievable rods, lines. I mean, the, the number of flies out there for, you know, the, the fly tires are tying great stuff for, for bass fishing. So yeah. yeah. And, and it's way more consistent across the country too. I mean, you know, my, my friends in Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know, down to Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, like bass fishing is bass fishing everywhere. So, um, yeah, so you can, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm going to fly out of here and go down to Austin, I'm calling up my buddies at the fly shop down there and saying what, you know, what's fishing, where are we going? You know, how, how are we catching bass this week? <laughs> there you go. So, so bass. So if you had to choose between, you know, bass and trout fishing, what, what what are you going for? Only one. Only because of the crowds. Like I'm primarily choosing bass fishing. I know I can get somewhere to, where I can get away from people and enjoying it. And, and frankly, I mean, I think it's just as fun as trout fishing. Uh, but yeah, everyone wants to be Brad Pitt, right? So you're, you're getting on a stream somewhere and trying to catch a trout with a dry fly. And that's the thing you're supposed to do when you're fly fishing. So yeah. we, in fact, we had to cancel a trip this weekend because somebody was coming up from a, from a, another state who wanted to have the trout fishing experience. The trout fishing is just not on the bass fishing is incredible, but he didn't want to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah, no, that's the yeah. thing Yeah, the bass still, there's some people that aren't, you know, aren't fully into it, but, uh, yep. but that's, what's great about fly fishing. You know, I mean, that's the diversity again is, is why it's great. You, you don't have to love any one thing you can choose. And it's so different. It's so diverse now. Like you said, you're doing salt water, right? You're traveling around the country doing some of that stuff as well. Is, is that a pretty, yep. pretty, it sounds like that's something you're pretty fired up about. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's, a uh, it's, uh, you know, my family has been down on Sanibel Island for, for my entire life. Uh, my surrogate grandparents were there, and, uh, I've gotten the opportunity to be the artist in residence for the wildlife refuge there. 
Uh, and so it's, it's just, I've got, I've got a lot of work, a lot of family and, and a great place to go fishing down there. So yeah, we're, I really enjoy getting there. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, I, I think, you know, I wanted to touch on a little bit of Idaho to think of, you know, like fly fishing Idaho. And I've, I've kind of, you know, we've covered, you've mentioned, at least mentioned a number of the places that anybody would think about and a couple of them we haven't mentioned because we don't want to, you know, throw too many <laughs> sure. people there. But, uh, but no, I think, um, you know, again, if I'm coming there, I'm going to be probably heading into Boise, uh, stopping in Boise. If, if somebody does come in there, what does that look like? Is there some camping around, uh, that sort of thing? Lodges? Or is it pretty diverse as far as where you, where you're staying? I mean, in Boise, it's a real city. So you're, uh, you know, jump on Airbnb, find a great spot in the North End, uh, you know, get a, get a, you know, find out where the good restaurants are and live the city life while you're going fishing. Um, there's, I, I'm sure there is camping around, but you're, you know, the, the campsites I know about are right in the city anyway, you know, places to, to places to park an RV kind of thing. Yeah, not I a, betcha. not a, not a woodsy on the river experience, <laughs> no, but you just drive, like you said, just drive up uh, an hour, you know, in any direction and you're going to get it. Yep. Any direction out of Boise, you're, you're pretty much lost. Yeah, you're pretty much yeah. lost. That's good. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let's uh, let's dig in a little bit. Uh, your artwork. That's something. Yeah. I, that's the first thing I saw. And in fact, I have a sticker on my water bottle. You gave me uh, the. Well, let's see. I, I think that was your artwork. I'm trying to think now. Is it say McCall Angler with a, like a rainbow on it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's our that's our logo. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did design that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. So so take us to the art. We've had a number of um, the last artist we had on was uh, Ray Troll, who's up in Alaska and does a lot of this. Sure, crazy. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I know. know Ray. Uh, yeah, I know Ray's work really well. I don't know Ray. He's one of the artists that I've I have not had the the uh, fortunate to to meet yet, but uh, love his work. You can listen to that episode we had if you want to get to know him. I definitely we, will. We did a good yeah. dig into his his life is really interesting. And uh, but but so I'm always interested in the art because it's such a it's a thing that I I'm not an artist. And sure. uh, and even though I have some artists in my family, I'm not into oh, it. Really? So yeah. So talk about um, you know, for you, like have this has been a lifelong thing. Uh, yeah, it's been a lifelong thing. I started drawing when I was really young. My mom, uh, you know, she was a she was an art school person. Uh, uh, started stealing her stuff when I was a little kid and and really got into it then uh, ended up going uh, did did some some really uh, advanced art stuff in high school uh, some some kind of selected class stuff and then went to architecture school uh, at the University of Minnesota where I also got an art degree so yeah yeah oh, wow so you came out so with an architecture I mean that's quite a did you ever utilize that degree uh, I did when, when, uh, we were doing so, so after I got out of the university of Minnesota, I, uh, I took an air force scholarship to, to be in school, a ROTC scholarship. And so I got stationed in Mount home, Idaho, 50 miles East of Boise and, uh, ended up out in Idaho, uh, was working as an officer. So that, that part of my life definitely got put on hold. Um, and then when I got out of the air force, the, uh, the McCall area was really booming. So we were doing real estate redevelopment. I had some investors that we were, we were buying properties and, uh, I was designing them, had a small crew where we were redeveloping them. And then the, the bubble popped in 2008, 2009. So, <laughs> oh, wow. So you went through yeah, that. Yeah. So that was it. So your things were crazy and amazing. And then the bubble pops and then, and then what, what's next for you after that? Well, so the only trade I've ever known is doing artwork. I'm, I'm good with my, my hand drawn pictures. So I started doing all the chalkboards in the bars and restaurants in Boise, a little bit in Seattle, a little bit in Salt Lake, but I worked directly for the liquor distributors, drawn pictures of like Jack Daniels bottles and things. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's how I kind of made it through that, uh, that little blip on the radar. And while I was doing that, uh, I was working for Jackson kayak Trans to figure out how the lodge was going to function i'm fishing i'm going to trade shows and i drew a couple of fish and uh long story short gray's sporting journal picked me up for a cover and then i got another cover and then i got the 40th anniversary cover of gray's sporting journal and for those who don't know what gray's sporting journal is as a as an outdoor artist a career you know in your career you would hope to have a cover of that magazine that was a that would that was a, an That's initial cool. aspiration of mine and here I was just starting this new style and these paintings got picked up. So I had to take a step back and say, wow, this is actually a thing. Like I can, I have to think about how to be an artist when I grow up. I, I you know, everyone right. always told me you can be an artist when you grow up, but, uh, yeah, here I am. I'm standing in my studio in Boise and, uh, have too many paintings that I'm supposed to be doing right now. So right. I'm talking to you. <laughs> there you go. That's exactly. So you got, so you've got the guiding and stuff, but really does, is the art, is that the, the bulk, is that the majority of, of kind of the business, the, the stuff that you have going? 
Well, I mean, it just depends on where, where I'm at and what we're doing. You know, right now we're really busy with the start of the season, getting the shop open. Uh, my trade is doing my art, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the art was the catalyst for me getting into the, the fishing industry and the hunting industry and, and how I've built all these relationships that, that now we're working with and, and doing, you know, you and I met through Nick Torres yeah. and Lamson. I never would have met Lamson and Nick Torres had it not been for the fact that I draw nice fish, you know? All so right. there <laughs> yeah. you go. Yeah. That's cool. And I guess that's that, that's how it works, right? You, the more you get into it, you never know how it's going to work because it's the yeah. journey. Because it's yep. it's all about the journey, and and we're all on that journey, which which is pretty cool. Yep, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah, so I mean, I've been fortunate. I I owned a gallery in downtown Boise for a while. Represented a lot of names that your listeners will know: uh, Andrea Larco, Paul oh, Puckett, yeah. uh, Ad Maddox, Derek DeYoung. Um, all these people are friends of mine, and and yeah, you know, going to going to IFTDs for for the last few years or pre COVID anyway. You know, you meet everyone in the industry. You know, you meet the the people who are building skiffs, the people who are building waders. Oh yeah, um, talking to the rod manufacturers. So you just meet all these people, and it's an easy conversation. To say oh. Yeah, I do those pictures that you've seen. So, yeah. Today's episode is sponsored by Lake Lady Rods, building distinctive custom rods, each created one at a time to the exact specifications for you. Custom built to be a super sensitive uh, rod. I just got back from a trip up to Kamloops and was fishing the four weight. This was really cool. I had an intermediate line on it was casting uh, all week and it was super nice it, i mean i could cast that thing i think farther than any trout rod i had it was partly due to the line and partly due to the the balance of the rod so it was really great there's all the the touches everybody was noting the rod um, on the trip it definitely stuck out uh, of course i have the blue the blue rod the wet fly swing colors so it's all good uh, Chris has been doing this for quite a while. He produces uh, unique handles. That's the one thing you see a lot, a lot of on these rods is his definitely the unique uh, Portuguese uh, handle. Um, he also restores and builds bamboo rods from scratch as well. And now I want to connect you with Lake Lady. If you haven't connected with Chris, you can do that now. If you head over to wetflyswing.com slash Lake Lady, uh, that's L-A-K-E-L-A-D-Y to support this podcast and check out the great stuff Chris has going on the custom rod end. Okay, back to the show. So it sounds like you're pretty busy. If somebody wanted to, uh, you know, get a project going with you, what, what does that look like? Is that a possibility? Uh, it's always a possibility. We're, uh, you know, I've, I've got, I've got folks who tell me what I'm supposed to be doing when I'm supposed to be doing it. But, uh, you know, I've got a few blank canvases on the wall waiting to waiting to have something painted on them for sure. <laughs> oh, you do. You do. So, you, and, yeah. you, and what do you focus? Do you do like, uh, I mean, are you doing like everything logos, stuff like that too, or is it mainly just a big, we, art? Yeah. yeah. So we, we work with, I work with West mountain drifters. Um, I'm, I'm kind of the creative director there and that's a, that's a team of creatives kind of more of an agency side where you know if if wet fly swing were to come to me and say hey ed we need a logo and we'd love to have your artwork on it i'll sketch up something i'll concept something and then uh you know the team kind of takes it over and they they bring it to fruition get stickers like the mccall angler sticker is a perfect example you yeah. know i drew that i drew that fish i had a concept for kind of how it was going to look but you want to put fonts and like you know the adobe creative suite in front of me i'm i'm not your guy ever so yeah, you're, free, you're like a free uh, you're like a whatever you call that that like um freehand stuff you just you just go yep yeah i just i just make i make the the art that's it <laughs> that's awesome no it's yeah. good to find you got that you, you know your you know you know your skill right there's no reason to mess with any of that other stuff especially if you don't like doing it right yeah exactly exactly and and it is it's super fun we've got uh we've got a great team of people you know now now we're working with uh videographers and photographers all over the country doing fun little videos for different brands and um yeah we've we we have a pretty good time with it yeah sounds sounds so, like a good time good so yeah so nice. Well, I, I think that, you know, again, I mentioned we're kind of thinking Idaho. What else if somebody's coming in there? What, what do you recommend? I mean, obviously, it's it's usually go to the fly shop and, and check that out. But is, are there any other kind of, uh, you know, where people can dig in more like right now and resources out there? Where would you send them if they want to be like, God, I, I really I'm, I'm going through Idaho. Uh, maybe I've got this family event or something. I want to find out about fishing. What, what would you tell them? Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would send them to send them to the shops, find out if find out what's fishing. uh 
you know, obviously, uh, for, for us up in McCall, the McCall angler. And then, uh, yeah, in, in Boise, my go-to is the Idaho angler. Um, I am a, I'm a very bad consumer of, uh, social media and internet resources. So videos and stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Videos and stuff. I just don't, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, so I can't, I can't really direct anyone to great blogs or great right. YouTube channels, anything like that. But, uh, how did you get to that point with your, you know, like in your guiding, how, how did you get to the point where, you know, you, at some point you were a beginner and then at now you guide, like who do, who is your, did you have somebody there that, that you kind of look back? Yeah. I think I alluded to the story. Like when things got bad up in McCall, one of my, you know, my mentors who kind of taught me to fly fish and, and bow hunt, uh, uh, he was a retired guy from Chicago and just, you know, I was basically unemployed and, and he had nothing better to do. So he taught me a lot of that stuff, you know, kind of refine the things that I knew. And then frankly, like the kayak fishing is as silly as it sounds. Um, the, the, the hardest thing to do while you're fly fishing is line management and, and kind of keeping all the cluster. So it kind of accelerates your learning curve to figure out, you know, how to, how to, how to maximize your, your time on target with, you know, your boats turning in the wind, your lines mm -hmm. snagged around a, a pedal or whatever it is. So you got to figure out where all your line is. You got to figure out how to, how to be efficient in your casting. You got to figure out how you're not going to tangle your line, you know, yeah. tangle your tip at every five minutes because sitting on the boat, it's really hard to like get your rod back and get, you know, get, you know, just all the things that you don't think about. Yeah. You, you kind of have to figure that out. And then, yeah, I mean, I've just been fortunate to be out on the water quite a bit and, and, you know, not so much now, again, I've got 10 year old twins, so oh, wow. I don't, I don't, I don't get to fish all the time anymore, but yeah. back then, you know, my business was doing artwork in the fishing industry. So any excuse I had to go out, I was, I was on the water. Yeah. And you're still, and now you're still doing some guiding throughout the year. Yeah, I did. I'll do, um, I'll do a couple of hosted trips a year and then I go up and kind of fill the schedule with McCall angler when they need me. So I see. I'll be up there. I'll be up there. Um, you know, the, the busy times of year, like this weekend normally would be busy except we're going to get the monsoons coming through. So I think the most of the weekend's going to get canceled. Uh, but 4th of July, 4th of July weekend. Gotcha. So it's the busy, the, the holidays or the, the, what pushes that. Yeah. Or if we're doing instruction up there, you know, we do a lot of stuff with all the big, uh, the big, uh, like Tamarack, uh, whitetail, the big private clubs up there. So oh, we'll do, we'll do, le we'll do lessons and things and just need an extra body, whatever it is. So gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. not, that's always a question I'm interested in because the guiding, you know, it seems like, um, you know, some people love it. Some people maybe not so much. I mean, do you, do you really enjoy the guiding or is that something where maybe it's not? I love, I love guiding. I you do? love the, ex I love the experience of teaching and being on the water, uh, like, talking people through and a lot of my buddies who i fish with tell to, you know they, they say i'm a little bit hard on them when i'm when i'm yeah. on a boat especially, especially saltwater fishing but no like showing people new things and teaching them water and and watching them grow uh i i don't know maybe that makes me sound kind of like a jerk but i just i really i really do enjoy that part of of fishing the coaching aspect of it that's right. So you don't get stressed out about the fishing much. Oh, sure. Life I, sure I yeah. Do. Yeah, sure. I do. Sure. I want everyone's experience. I want everyone to have a 10 out of 10 day. Like, yeah, that's the that's the goal. Right. But you can I tell all the guides, I'm like, you know, you can only control what you can control. So manage expectations, manage people and, and how they feel about it. Don't you cannot manage how the fish are going to bite. You cannot manage, you know, how many times the line's going to get tangled. You can't manage those things. So you, you just have to, you have to manage the experience, but, but no. And, and yeah, I mean, I love doing that, but I can't do that all the time with everything else going on with the family, with, you know, with, yeah. With, with the things you got things in life <laughs> yeah exactly yeah there's a lot going that, that no, yeah. it. so well and taking it back to mccall we kind of started there uh you know at the beginning but if if i'm rolling into mccall right now you know what does that look like just take us to the city so some, somebody who hasn't been there is it kind of a, a smaller medium-sized town or is it more like have some stuff going with it what's it look like oh it's tiny mccall is tiny i would i would say you know, at peak when all the summer people are there, it's not, I, I'll bet it is over 10,000 people, yeah. but it's, yeah, yeah. it's a tiny, you know, there's, there's one stoplight in the town. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, one stoplight. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a two bar, one stoplight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lake so it's town. tiny. It's a, this is great. it's kind of a, it's kind of a mini Tahoe. Like, oh, right. 
think of a big lake in the mountains, but there's only one town in it and, and you really can't drive around the thing. <laughs> That's it. Right, right. Okay. So you got this little town, you go and you got this lake. So people are out there yeah, with their wakeboarding, like you said, or whatever. Yep. And then, yep. and then, but then you've got these little trout streams that are sprinkled around that you can find. Yep. And, and, uh, like we said, stop by the McCall angler to figure that out. Uh, and then, yeah, the shop, the shop is actually because of the rules of the, the state of Idaho, that the shop, we actually work with a company called drift West is the fly shop. And it's right next to the main grocery store there in town. You can't miss it. There's a big, there's a big adipose drift boat with one of my pieces of art on the side. So, gotcha. uh, yeah, you can't miss it, but no, they, they, they book for all of the outfitters. There's a, there's about three or four fishing outfitters. And then we work with a bunch of whitewater guides too, to, to book trips out of McCall. Oh, right. So that's, that shop's called drift West. Yeah. Drift West. Yeah. I've heard of that. That's yep. right. So you got drift yeah. West and yeah, obviously you got the whitewater too there. So nearby you, you've got whitewater operations is the payhead is that a big white water river there's some yeah there's some good whitewater uh it's it's a little bit farther south uh from the kabartan it's called the kabartan bridge down through smith's ferry um they actually hold the whitewater i, I don't know if it's a red bull competition but the the payette river championships are kind of the premier uh championships in the country for whitewater kayakers uh it's the longest continuous class five uh water in the country so you when you're driving when you're driving up to McCall uh from Boise you're gonna you're gonna be driving right next to this water like this time of year it is ripping and it yeah. looks like uh Crazy. it looks like somebody turned the fire hose on and it's just running down that canyon so that's where these crazy people who kayak all come from around all the world right. to oh, yeah. to test their metal that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And, and there's occasionally uh, people uh, dying out there every year or is that kind of, yeah, it happens. It happens. Definitely. Yeah. It's uh, you know, that that's a, that's definitely that's part of the thing. Deal. So that's part of the yeah. Deal. Yeah. Okay. Well let's take it out of here in the, uh, the top fly. We got this top fly challenge going um, where we're having folks uh, kind of choose their, their, their top fly. And then we're going to be giving away some swag and stuff uh, as we go. Okay. But, but what is your, so going into this, this is a pretty easy one. You may have already said it, but if I'm heading into McCall, I'm going to go fish one of those, those streams kind of out there coming into the reservoir. And are most of these coming into the reservoir or coming out of the reservoir? Uh, both. I mean, yeah, one, both. the, the system runs from reservoir to reservoir all the way out of the oh, yeah. So, I mean, if I had to list all the reservoirs that are in that that uh, chain, it's I, I couldn't do it probably. Yeah, there's tons. yeah. So there's <laughs> yeah. water. There's water everywhere. So you just got to go find yeah. some water. So if you're fishing a, some of these smaller, you know, tribs or whatever, what's your, um, you know, if you had to pick one fly, uh, what, what would that be? Is it, is there something like this? You know, the, the time of year, which would be right now, right? Yeah, I mean, my my one fly pretty much anywhere. But uh, if I if I got to take one fly for a season, it's always a yellow Sally. Oh yeah, you know, I love kinda, the yellow sally. Yeah, yeah, it kind of it kind of morphs between all kinds of different things, and depending yeah. on how you tie it, uh, you know, it can be a it can be a terrestrial, it can be a caddis, it can be a stonefly, uh, you know, bass will eat it, trout will eat it, uh, and it yeah, it serves it serves multiple purposes. Uh, I I always have a couple of markers to kind of change the color of it if yeah. I if I need to, but uh, right, that's kind of my that's my go to. Does it have um? What are the wings made of? Does it have wings? I usually do it. I'll do a caddis hair, you know, a, a regular caddis pattern. And then, yeah, just board. like a, almost like, um, not an elk hair, but kind of like an elk hair. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, usually, uh, you know, a small foam body with, with short little skinny rubber legs. So yeah, it can be, it can be all kinds of things. You can clip it down and make it other stuff, whatever. So yeah, yeah this is great. This yeah. is great. I, lo yeah. I love this. Yeah. So the, and I'll put that in the, uh, that wetflyswing.com slash uh, top fly. We're going to be doing this little, uh, deal. So we're going to have the listeners choose. We're going to put this in the, in the running. So you're going to have the, uh, the, the yellow Sally, which I love. And then I'm going to, then whoever the listeners choose as the number one fly, I'm going to tie it. And then, oh, okay. and then, and I then like since it. I, since, since I suck at tying, um, I'm going to also <laughs> get Tim Camisa, uh, on the other side of the country to tie the actual winner. And then we're going to kind of compare notes and have, have a fun time with it. But yeah, you're going to get it. The yellow Sally is going up on our, on our leaderboard. It's going to be one. I of love the, it, man. I love it. I one love of the deals. So, um, so yeah. good. So we got the, we got the top fly out of the way and, and the yellow Sally is great because, I mean, I had this yellow sow. I remember we fished it a lot, and it was a and it all we always use it at a certain time of year. It was actually kind of like maybe earlier than right now, kind of more. But um, but I remember we put some uh, thin like plastic wings on it just to give a little. And I don't even remember where that yep. came from, but gave it a little yep. shine or something, right? Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's it. 
Right on. Well, what else? Anything else we're missing here with Idaho? So we're talking, if you, somebody comes in, they're saying fly fishing Idaho. Uh, we've touched on it. feels like we've touched on a little bit of everything, right? I mean, wh- what else would you tell somebody if they're just coming through on their way to wherever and they want to fish Idaho? Any other things you, you would give them a heads up on? No, and I think you've touched on it. Like the, the great thing about Idaho is just the access and the, and the different experiences everywhere. Um, you, you know, we're in this, we're in this city and literally can jump off and go in anything. And then one of the advantages for us in McCall is we, you know, the one thing we haven't really talked about is I, I come from, uh, kind of a, you know, the, a group of backcountry flyers. So the, you know, flying into the backcountry, you talked about the middle fork going in there All right. and, uh, you know, catching those cutthroats for, for, you know, th- until your arm gets tired kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that's something that you just can't do anywhere else in the country. You can't, you can't fly into small lodges and, uh, and have that experience. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of a, that's a, that's a really, really neat experience that a very, 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 very few people get to get to experience. So, yeah. I'm glad you touched on that because we're, yeah. you know, Alaska is known for that, right? Okay. You got all right. these, you know, but, but Idaho, right. You don't hear as much about it, but dude, take us there a little bit. So on one of these things, so we're talking flying in, you're saying flying in a, uh, like helicopter or something else. No, 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 no. The, so, so, uh, part of the, part of the experience in the, in the Frank church is, uh, and, and frankly all around Idaho. Uh, but the, the, you know, there are a lot of backcountry strips. It was a very, very rural, rugged place for a long time. So before the Frank church was made a national wilderness area, there were these ranches in the backcountry that, uh, you know, the, I believe the middle fork is, you know, vaguely 2,500, 3000 feet. So there's not a bunch of snow back there. And so most of the year, these, these people would live out there, be ranchers, and they'd have their bush plane where they could go oh, back and forth. Right. And so now all of those airstrips have been grandfathered into the Frank church wilderness. And oh, a lot wow. of those lodge, a lot of those lodges still exist. So when you float the middle fork, if you're lucky enough to get on one of those permits, kind of the stops are always on those bars where those ranches are. That. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, we, you know, we work with the flying bee back there, yep. uh, the root, the root ranch, uh, Polly Um, there's a lot of lodges that if you can get the, get the opportunity to go back there, go fly in. They've got, they've got bars, they've got great little cabins yeah. and you can, you can experience that kind of thing. That's a, that is an Alaska almost experience, except you're in the desert, but an Alaska kind of experience flying in over this space. That's there aren't people. They're just 2 million acres. Yeah, there just aren't people anywhere except for the people who are recreating back there with you. So it's a it's a neat thing. Yeah, that is a neat thing. Yeah, yeah I remember that. We were yeah. on our trip. We floated down. As we got out of the canyon, we stopped by one of those places and got some ice, I think. Maybe some yep. beer. Yep, yep. The most expensive ice on, on the planet, for sure. <laughs> that's right. So we got that. So that's the Frank <laughs> Church uh, Wilderness of No Return, right? Is what yep. it's called? Yep, exactly. So yeah, you uh, you floated the middle fork. I, I'm not sure probably where you started, but I can't yeah, remember. you float the middle fork down to the main salmon. The yeah. main salmon runs the rig runs down yep. to Kamii, links up with the Clearwater, links up with the Columbia and, and the Snake River, and, and yeah, off you go. Uh, off you go to your country. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's it. yeah. It's a great, it's a great uh, area. Yeah, for sure, it's remote. So when you fly into those, so this is flying into. This isn't like you're flying into necessarily dropping into a lake. You're going into these lodges, and then from the lodges, you're either hanging out there, or maybe hiking. So it's not like you're you're doing. Yeah, the hiking. You're, you're in the wilderness, but you're not doing the wilderness thing. Yeah, hiking or, or horseback, uh, a lot of horseback riding back there. I know the, the Flying Bee has horses that uh, if you're fortunate enough to, to have the experience, you can get on and, and go up into the high country, go find some of the lakes up there. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so you're like in McCall, we've got, I think, three different commercial airlines that service the back country. So McCall Aviation, Salmon Air, uh, and there's one more that's escaping my mind. Uh-huh. But yeah, you can you can be in McCall, call them up and say, hey, I want to go. I want to go back to the Flying Bee for lunch and they'll take yeah. you back there. They there call it that. I think, I think the Bush pilots call it the hundred dollar cheeseburger. There so, you go. That's yeah. it. That's it. That sounds, that sounds like a good one. Nice. Yeah. Right on. Well, this is good. In Valley country, the Valley, I just had that note here. Is that just, uh, is Valley country all of, is the Boise, is that Valley country? What is Valley country? No, no, no. Valley, Valley County is, uh, oh, Valley that's, County. that's the, that's the greater McCall area. McCall, yeah. Cascade, Round Valley, um, that's, that's kind of the pay at river country up yeah, there. That's so Valley, Valley County, yeah. Valley country. Yeah. that's right. Valley yeah. County. Right on. Good. So, all right. Well, I think, uh, I think this gives us our primer on, uh, on Idaho. This is really the first one we've touched on a little bit. Obviously, like you said, we had, I had Nick, uh, Nick came on with lamps in and we've, we've just touched on a little bit. So this gives people a little bit more taste and obviously the Henry's fork, 
um, that they got all that over there. Does that does that kind of outweigh when you think of Idaho? It seems like that area gets so much. Why, why is why is that get so much of the? Uh, you know what I mean? Like it seems like it's almost ninety nine percent of the um, the media is on that area part of Idaho. What, why is that? Uh, cause the fishing's great. Yeah, it is. It is. It does have good fishing. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, just, you get those, you get the, all the, all the quintessential things that people think about fly fishing for trout are there. You've got the, uh, you've got the, uh, the hatches, the Drake hatches, you get the salmon fly hatches. It's really easy to access. There's great outfitters over there. There's great walk and wade fishing on the ranch. And then there's great float boat fishing um there's great float boat fishing on the on you know down towards ashton uh but it is the it's the busiest fishery in america so yeah it, it is yeah. that is the place <laughs> that's the busiest place yeah and it's, and it's not easy that's the other thing that's great is that it's technical especially right some of those parts of the henry's fork are pretty technical yeah nice exactly exactly Right on, Ed. Well, I think we'll leave it there and maybe just give a give a update, you know, for you in the next kind of what are we at now? It's kind of we're going into June into the summer. Say, say the rest of this year. Or what 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 can we expect from you? Anything new, or we want to give a shout out to anything? Man, I'm uh, we're gonna get on the road with a with an old Spartanet trailer, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to try to barnstorm some some fly shops and do some artwork and fish with a bunch of people this summer and and guide and go to Florida and do you know oh, wow. all the things. So yeah, uh, yeah, summer's gonna be busy. I'm gonna be journaling all the way through it. You can find my work at Ed Anderson Art on the old Instagram. Oh yeah, kind of follow follow the adventure along. Yeah, Ed Anderson Art. Awesome. So you're gonna you, we're gonna be able to track you there. So we'll put that link in the show notes so we can follow you on Instagram. And uh, and is that gonna have? Are you gonna have the family out there traveling in the camper? Yeah, the girls are definitely gonna be with me a little bit. They've got a busy schedule themselves. So um, I uh, yeah, I've got. Um, we're gonna have that. We're you know, it just it just depends on what's, what's happening. You know, the whole juggle. I don't I don't right. even know how it's gonna lay out. But so you don't have any good tips for another another dad who's got a couple of kids who struggles no. <laughs> to uh, you know to like spend more time like right get out and is that something that's challenge right? It's hard to do all the, everything. Yeah, man. It's the the my my one tip the chaos with parenting and I mean me and my wife uh, struggle with it all the time, but uh spend the time spend the time with your kids man yeah. they uh if you if you're not trying to do i got i got one kid trying to get in my studio right now and you're trying to do other stuff and it's Perfect. you know you got you got all this all the things going on and if you can drop what you're doing and concentrate on the kids it's the most rewarding thing in the world it's uh, you know it, know it doesn't matter best day of fishing ever it compares nothing to my little girls being happy so i know that's yeah. it that's it perfect well we'll leave it there and we got the ed anderson art we'll uh, put that link and uh yeah ed thanks for uh, taking the time today and give a little uh, highlight on on idaho and what you have going and we're looking forward to uh, you know definitely moving forward keeping in touch with you and seeing some art and maybe we'll connect with uh with you on some of this art stuff too as well so thanks again all right appreciate it dave thanks so much so there you go wetflyswing.com slash 336 336 that'll get you the links and show notes today quick listener shout out john lukes john connected on email a while back and noted uh, that he is loving the diversity of topics uh, john want to say thank you for checking in uh, and good to catch up with you here and give you a quick shout out we appreciate the support and uh, looking forward to hopefully chatting soon as well we'd love to hear from you if you get a chance you can head over right now you can send me an email dave at wetflyswing.com Reminder, we noted the Top Fly Challenge in this episode and at wetflyswing.com slash topfly, you can get a free box of flies. It's the easiest way to grab some flies on the go and find out what the top patterns were from guests on this show. That's all I have for you today. I appreciate you for hanging in there and looking forward to catching up with you soon. Hope you have a good uh, evening, a good morning, or a good afternoon wherever you're at and hope to see you on the water or maybe talk to you online. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com.